saddest day of my life right now. I just cannot imagine leaving, but unfortunately, it's time to go. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 countries where Americans are not welcome. That's when you were stationed in Saudi Arabia, right, Dad? For this list, we'll be looking at countries and territories from which Americans are either discouraged from visiting or generally unwelcomed by the native populace. Have you visited any of these places? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20, Myanmar. On February 1, 2021, Myanmar experienced a coup d'etat which saw the country's military overthrowing the elected ruling party and establishing a junta. This has resulted in the ongoing Myanmar civil war, which has plagued the country with demonstrations and violent crackdowns from the military regime. With the fighting continuing, there's virtually no proper health care left. This clinic is all these people can hope for. As such, the United States government has advised its citizens not to travel to Myanmar. They cited various reasons for the advisory, including the potential for wrongful detention, violent civil unrest, inadequate health care, and even the possibility of death from hidden mines. Until this conflict gets resolved, Americans are most definitely not welcome in the country. Even they don't care of the, the world or the outsiders, and then they just do what they like. So this is what we are suffering from. Number 19, Yemen. Like Myanmar, the United States government has imposed a strict advisory against traveling to Yemen, citing its ongoing civil war. They cite terrorism as a major problem in the country and warn that American citizens may quickly find themselves in danger. They can't make artificial limbs quickly enough to cope with the growing number of amputees who need them now. Furthermore, they state that foreigners are often the targets of kidnappings. To make matters even worse, the country's U.S. Embassy closed back in 2015, meaning American citizens are not legally protected while inside Yemen. This, of course, makes them all the more susceptible to targeted violence. You want somewhere that doesn't attract American tourists? Think Yemen when you get the idea. Number 18, Sudan. Ranked 172nd on the Human Development Index, Sudan is one of the least developed countries in the entire world. It currently faces large degrees of poverty, political instability, and fractional violence. And like Myanmar and Yemen before it, Sudan is currently under a strict do not travel advisory. Armed conflicts and civil unrest plague the country, and areas often frequented by Westerners are often the targets of terrorist attacks. Furthermore, Westerners and aid workers are often the victims of targeted crimes like assault, kidnappings, and armed robberies. If there is no ceasefire, it may be difficult for aid workers to be able to do what they're called to do. Even the rural areas outside of urban centers are populated with hidden explosives, making travel inside the country incredibly dangerous and ill-advised. Number 17, Libya. Bordering Sudan is the state of Libya, which is the fourth largest country in the Arab world. And like its neighbor, it is not entirely welcome to Americans. Libya has a high volume of crime and violent extremist activity, making it a highly inopportune place to travel. American citizens have been the targets of kidnappings, and tourist locations like malls, hotels, and airports are known to be hot spots for terrorist activity. Foreigners might also be subjected to militia-controlled checkpoints and unlawful detention, not to mention crimes of opportunity like assault and robbery. We are stuck in a 10-meter square between the two countries. But these migrants aren't the only ones stranded at the border. There is also no formal tourist industry operating inside Libya, making travel extremely unpredictable and discouraged. Number 16, Angola. Found in southern Africa is the Republic of Angola, which is currently the second largest Portuguese-speaking country behind Brazil. Unlike the other countries so far mentioned on this list, Angola is not currently under a travel advisory. However, that doesn't make it any less difficult. Simply getting a visa to visit Angola can be a real pain for American citizens. The application process is dense and intimidating, even requiring a personal letter of invitation from a resident of the country. If successful, it may take months for the approval process to go through. And that's if you're even approved in the first place. There's a pretty good chance that the application will be denied. Number 15, Venezuela. We travel across the, dude, we travel across the Atlantic to visit Venezuela, found on the northern tip of South America. A developing country, Venezuela is known for its high degree of corruption and limited civil liberties, and is currently considered an authoritarian state under President Nicolas Maduro. 
The Independent International Fact-Finding Mission has found many human rights abuses within Venezuela, including forced disappearances and extrajudicial killings. American citizens are also routinely detained by the regime's security forces and become targets of robberies, carjackings, and homicides. And in March of 2019, the Department of State withdrew the U.S. Embassy Caracas, leaving scant emergency services for American visitors. Number 14. India The famous South Asian country is generally safe to visit, with a few notable exceptions. The U.S. government advises against visiting the India-Pakistan border and the territories of Jammu and Kashmir, citing civil unrest and armed conflict. Some tourist locations are also targeted by local criminals, and violent crime has been known to occur in these areas. It's also not advised for Western women to travel alone. Number 13. Somalia Known for its long coastline, Somalia is found on the eastern edge of Africa, right beside Ethiopia and Kenya. While the seaside landscape is undeniably beautiful, Somalia is an incredibly poor country, with up to 70% of its population living in poverty. It is also placed last on the Human Development Index. And no, it is not a place for American visitors, with frequent terrorist attacks and a high degree of violent crime in crowded areas. Illegal roadblocks also populate the country, with kidnappings and detention being very frequent occurrences. In fact, Somalia's dangers are so serious that the U.S. government advises drafting a will and leaving behind DNA samples before entering the country. I am so sorry, but I will have to cancel my reservation. Number 12. Afghanistan This Asian country has been in a bad state since the late 1970s when the Saur Revolution overthrew President Mohammad Daoud Khan to establish a socialist republic. Ever since, Afghanistan has been embroiled in what is called the Afghan Conflict, indicating near-continuous violence for over 40 years. Travel to Afghanistan is strictly advised against, with an extremely high chance for Western visitors to be kidnapped or injured. The military will get out any American who wants to leave Afghanistan, Hello! but Pentagon officials admit the window of opportunity is shrinking. Terrorist attacks and hostage-taking are a common occurrence, and there is no formal tourism industry in place. Furthermore, the U.S. Embassy in Kabul closed in 2021, resulting in an increased frequency of unlawful detentions. Number 11. Syria For many years, it was impossible to obtain a Syrian tourist visa, meaning American citizens were quite literally banned from entering the country. That changed in 2023, but the United States government still strongly objects to visiting. Syria is a very problematic country that is rife with infighting, cartel activity, corruption, and poverty. I think about the children a lot, about their situation and what will happen to them. When it's dark, the night turns into terror. U.S. citizens are often the targets of kidnappings and illegal detentions, and the risk of harm is extremely high owing to the widespread violence. The U.S. Embassy in Damascus has also been out of operation since 2012, shortly after the onset of the Syrian civil war. Millions of citizens have left the country in recent years, and Americans are strongly discouraged from going in. Number 10. Russia With the Russian invasion of Ukraine, visiting Russia is pretty much off the board for Americans. But even before this conflict, Americans often needed to jump through hoops to cross the border. I'm announcing that we will join our allies in closing off American airspace to all Russian flights. Visas are only granted prior to arrival, and you need an invitation letter from someone in the country to even apply for a visa. Once acquired, you then fill out a lengthy visa application. It requires you to indicate every country you've visited for the last 10 years, your education history, parents' names, where you've worked, and even professional organizations that you're a member of. After all that, you hope your passport comes back with a valid visa. What do you suppose I do in the meantime? Drive faster. Number 9. Bhutan. Landlocked between India and China, the country of Bhutan is a place that some tourists may want to visit, but get stuck in the details of how to get in. Dashi Dile. Dashi Dile. Dashi Dile. May good fortune be with you. The country has no embassy of any kind with the United States. As a result, the only way to obtain a proper visa to enter the country is through a tour agency. Jesse can't go to Bhutan. It's just for a couple of weeks. The visa application itself is not all that complicated, but having to go through a tour operator severely limits the amount of visas issued to anyone wishing to come in. This unusual policy does, however, keep the sheer number of visitors down. 
allowing your experience to be that much more special. Tourism was only allowed starting in the 1970s. The amount of foreign visitors each year is strictly limited to protect Bhutan's culture and environment. Number 8. Iran Relations between the U.S. and Iran have been strained for decades and worsened during the Trump administration. There had been allegations from Donald Trump that Soleimani had been uh, actively plotting against U.S. interests in the region. This resulted in Iran outright banning any U.S. citizens from entering the country. The ban has since been lifted, but travelers still need to go through several processes to be allowed to visit. Imagine it's about 40 years after Iran's revolution. A lot of people that they are here, their relatives getting older and older. Initially, they need a travel authorization number. Once acquired, then they can obtain a visitor visa. However, visitors cannot travel solo within the country. So tourists need to work with a guide to acquire their number and the visa in order to spend any time within the borders of Iran. So there's a lot of students in medicine that have been caught and, you know, can't come back. They have, you know, pending residencies, pending uh, degrees waiting for them, but they can't return. It's not fair at all. Number seven, Nauru. This island nation is known as the least visited country in the world. It's also the third smallest at just eight square miles. Economically, Nauru relies heavily on Australia in exchange for hosting an extremely controversial immigration detention center. Unsurprisingly, it isn't easily visited by tourists. Americans need to email Nauru Immigration to obtain an application form for a visa. Replies can take time. Applicants must provide a certified copy of their passport identity pages, proof of an onward flight and a hotel reservation, or a sponsorship from a local resident. The process is cumbersome and can be very long. Wannabe visitors then have to make their way to Brisbane, Australia to fly to Nauru. Number 6. Turkmenistan Similar to other entries on this list, U.S. visitors to this part of Central Asia will need a government-sanctioned letter of invitation. <laughs> It's essentially a letter form of sponsorship, which allows the government to control how many visitors come into the country. Absolutely no freedom of the press, uh, absolutely no way you could voice any kind of opinion. Although the process can be arduous, you're far more likely to get in this way than through other means. Some people have tried acquiring a transit visa, which allows you to pass through the country but not have an extended stay. Valid for three days, many of the embassies don't issue these and will force you to go through the proper steps to get a real tourist visa. Oh, how's it going in Turkmenistan? Mm, not great. Number five, Eritrea. Eritrea is perhaps not as familiar a name to Americans as some other countries on this list, but that doesn't make it easier to visit. Yet another place that has excessive visa paperwork, you'll need a lot of patience to get it sorted out. An estimated 5,000 people leave Eritrea every month. Aside from the typical forms, you have to provide proof of flights, a bank statement showing you have money to be there, and a plea document. It's essentially a letter asking you to explain why you want to visit, and possibly name drop someone over there to help sway officials into thinking you know someone within the country. Sorry. It does, however, appear that some of these requirements are easing, so keep your eye out for changes. Avec Eritrea, il faut mettre une pression maximale parce que ce qui s'y passe est extrêmement grave. Personne n'en parle. C'est un, un pays qui se vide de sa population. Number four, Cuba. The inability of Americans to travel to Cuba for pleasure has its roots in the trade embargo established in 1958. Dallas, Texas, 1963. Kennedy had just put a trade embargo on Cuba. The embargo also extended to Americans who simply wanted to visit the country for pleasure. So as far as official tourism goes, that's still banned and illegal today. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile crossing the embargo line that surrounds Cuba as an attack. However, Americans are permitted to visit the country under 12 different categories of travel that do not include tourism. So apply for a travel license under one of those categories. You'll always need a Cuba tourist card, aka a visa, to enter the country. Finally, be sure you have cash because you can't convert U.S. funds while in Cuba. And be careful what you buy. Some businesses are off limits to American visitors. What brings you to Cuba? Same thing that brings everyone else to Cuba. Culture, people, beauty. Number three, Saudi Arabia. Despite the fact that Saudi Arabia is a major supplier of oil to the United States, it has historically been difficult to get a visa to enter the country. What no man can provide, Mr. Lawrence, 
We need a miracle. Prior to 2019, they were only issued to individuals who were there on a religious visit to Mecca. Beyond that, no tourist visa was available, and those from the U.S. had little ability to visit. That's when you were stationed in Saudi Arabia, right, Dad? However, major changes have been pushing through Saudi Arabia since the election of Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. For the first time, the country began offering visitation rights to many countries, including the USA. Only time will tell if this remains. Number 2. Iraq Given the hostility that exists between these two countries, you may want to reconsider personal travel to this country. I know all about the war. Really? Point to Iraq. Why do you keep a globe on your janitor cart? In case I get lost. I'll give you a hint. It's not the country shaped like a boot. But should you proceed anyway, you'll need to go through their visa application process and provide your passport, driver's license, a letter indicating why you were traveling there, and the appropriate fee. Be aware that both a copy and your original passport need to be sent to acquire the visa. Anyone in your family discuss plans to either travel to Iraq or do business there? In some cases, despite having filled out everything as needed, embassy officials have been known to just arbitrarily deny applications at random. Plus, the possibility of violence in the area may persuade you to travel elsewhere. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into settings and switch on your notifications. Number 1. North Korea As it stands now, North Korea is one of the few countries in the world that U.S. citizens are outright banned from visiting. During the Trump administration, a ban on travel to the country was issued for anyone with an American passport. According to the U.S. Bureau of Consular Affairs website, only very specific exceptions are made by the State Department themselves. What other country in the world is Confucian, communist, hereditary, dynasty? There's no country like this. Prior to the ban, personal travel was permitted as long as you were on a contract with a North Korean guide. This prevented any on-your-own exploration of the country, but at least you could visit. Only time will tell if the travel ban will be lifted.